welcome to Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. It's Tract and Truth Tuesday. That is the name we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts because we want to use this day to urge each other to be more effective, to be better prepared to tell the gospel, share the gospel, use tools that help promote the gospel. And that's obviously where we're headed here today and every single Tuesday. So if you can stop what you're doing, I want to challenge you today. I've got three gospel tracks in front of me. Just in case you don't know what a gospel tract is, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. We have been in the business for 81 years of producing these kinds of gospel tools, these gospel tracts, and these are short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. Each one tells the same gospel message because there is only one, but each of our 40 tracts just comes at the gospel from a little different vantage point. Well, for 81 years, we've been publishing these, giving them away to all kinds of ministries and individuals, and I want to encourage you to get gospel tracks from us. As a matter of fact, today's broadcast, today's Tract and Truth will be slightly different than the others because I want to talk about a track rack. A track rack. Oh, you've often heard me talk about you getting a free sample packet of our tracks. That sample packet contains one each of all of our tracks, but today I want to focus on you doing more than just getting the sample packet. I want you to get tracks, a quantity of tracks for you, perhaps your church, and let's extend the gospel actively, not just individually, but corporately as well. That's where we're headed today. My Bible is open to two different places. It's open to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and it's open to Ephesians chapter 2, and that's where If you can, I urge you to stop and get out your own Bible. Well, let me lead in this way. Do you know the motto for the Boy Scouts? And I'm not asking what your opinion is about the present day Boy Scouts versus 20 years ago. All I'm asking is whether or not you know the Boy Scout motto. Well, that motto is just two words, be prepared. Well, friend, Long before the Boy Scouts came into existence in 1907, Jesus challenged his followers to be prepared. But long before Jesus came to earth and took on flesh and dwelt among us, God challenged his people to be prepared. Noah had to be prepared. Moses told the Jews in Egypt to be prepared. Joshua told the Jews 40 years later to be prepared. So in light of all this, I need to ask, are you and I prepared? Well, probably the right question for us to ask each other right now is this, prepared for what? That's where I want your mind to go today. I want you to ask yourself, am I prepared? For what am I prepared? What do I need to do to get prepared? Let me broaden that the the scope of the question and ask, is your local church prepared? That's where we're headed. Get your Bible and join me, Ephesians 2 and 2 Timothy 2. I said I had three gospel tracts in front of me. These are three tracts that I would put into a church track rack if I was the pastor there or a member of that church. The first one is called The Gift. That's all it's called, The Gift. It's a very simple, easy to read, clear idea of the gospel that 
salvation is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Getting simply across that salvation is not by works, it's a gift from God. A second track that I would put in that track rack is this one. Have you received God's gift? Have you received God's gift? Again, very simple, very clear. It goes out of the way to say, yeah, you may know about Jesus. You may know about Christmas. You may know about Easter, but have you received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? The third track here is one that comes at the gospel a little differently. It's entitled, Peace in Terminal Illness. Peace in Terminal Illness. Every family you know and I know has had somebody who has had a terminal illness, cancer or something else, and the family has struggled with that. How in the world can we have peace when the person is facing and dealing with a terminal, a life-ending illness? Here's a great tool to deal with their heart, not only for the moment, before they die, but deal with their heart so that they are ready with peace in their soul to face death and meet Jesus with assurance in their soul. Peace and terminal illness. Three tracks. Would you get them from us, please? My announcer is going to give you three different ways by which you can talk to us. Give us your name and address. Please do that. Order tracks. Yes, get the sample packet, but get more than just that. Get tracks and let you and I become partners and your church and I become partners in the work of the gospel. If your Bible's open, I'm going to read first out of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. 2 Timothy 2, 21 says this, If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet, that is fit, for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. There you go. I'm coming now over to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. I'm going to begin to quote from verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now listen to verse 10. For we believers are his, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Stop, please, right there. In those, that verse there in 2 Timothy 2, we found our word prepared. It means to make ready. Well, what are the believers to be prepared for? Verse 21 says that we are to be prepared to every or every kind of good work. That's what 2 Timothy 2.21 says. But I also read over there in Ephesians 2. In verse 10, we are told that we are God's workmanship. We are God's creation. Now, this is not a reference to making of our fleshly bodies. It is a reference to us being created in Christ Jesus. We are made new creatures in Christ the moment we are born again. Oh, by the way, let me just include right here. If you have never been born again, then you are not a new creature. You're an old creature. You are not qualified to meet God and go to heaven. Coming back to my thoughts on Ephesians 2, verse 10, that verse says that we are created in Christ unto or for the purpose of good works. But but, but don't stop there. Verse 10 goes on to say that these good works were ordained beforehand that we should walk in them. That word ordained there in Ephesians 2 verse 10 and the word prepared over in 2 Timothy to translate the same Greek root word. So God prepared good works to be done by saints before the world began and then he prepared saints to do those works after they're saved. Now, one of those works is obviously that you and I be telling the gospel of Jesus Christ. But let me turn my focus right now onto your local church. Is your church prepared? Is it actually preparing believers to tell the gospel? That question may be a little vague, so let me ask a specific question. Does your church have a track rack someplace handy for church folk to go there and find gospel tools to use in their day-to-day life? Does the leadership of your church ever point people to the track rack and urge them to use the tracks? Now, 
Let me just stop and answer the question, what in the world is a track rack? Well, typically, a track rack is found in the church's foyer. It has pockets for holding these little preachers called gospel tracks. Some tracks are made of wood. Most these days are made of clear plastic. You can buy them at an office supply store. But normally, someone in the church is assigned to keep the good quality tracks and other literature on display there so that folk can go and get them out and use them. In the last church I pastored, our track rack was uh, started out being a three by three, that's three feet by three foot size track in a beautiful area of the church. But it grew into an eight foot long by four foot high track rack. In the upper slots of the rack were stuff for adults and teens. There was material, gospel tracks and other material there. And the lower down levels, there were things for children. We had a lot of gospel tracks in there. The bulk of what was in our rack was tracks, but there were also small booklets on key Bible topics like the deity of Jesus and how to grow and have a prayer life in Jesus, how to have family devotions. And there were some booklets on current social issues there as well. But now listen, having a track rack does not make your church spiritual. A spiritual church is one where believers are growing to become more and more like Jesus. That is a spiritual church. Having a track rack is only a tool for people to use in their lives as they daily live out the life of Jesus. But if no one uses the track rack, no one takes the gospel tracks out of it and gives them out, what good is a track rack? Well, right about now, you may be saying, Brother Mark, our church doesn't have a track rack. Or perhaps you're saying, well, we've got one, but it's never used. What do we do? Well, here is my advice. Number one, you begin to pray about you being the one in charge of the track rack. Number two, Talk to your pastor about taking over the assignment of that track rack, and perhaps you need to go and ask him to let you get a rack and get it put up in your church's foyer. Don't start with an eight-foot-long place. A three-by-three-foot size is enough. It's enough. Third thing in my advice is this. Get a rack that has about 10 to 15 slots. Start small. Number four, Get about 20 copies of different tracks to put in each of the slots. Number five, here's key. Um, Listen, please. Please then pray about and go to your pastor and urge him to turn people's focus onto the track rack and have him to urge people to take the tracks and use them. Here's the key. Please listen to this. You know this, what I'm about ready to say. You know it. You know it ahead of time. Here it is. Everything in ministry, everything in life, everything rises and falls on leadership. The leader of your church must be promoting a task for that task to appear important to the church family. You've got to have leaders involved. If your leaders are not people are going to use tracks, then you become the track leader and you begin in your own life, in your own private one-on-one conversations to encourage people to use tracks. If there's no track rack up and you can't get one up, then you get 20 copies of this, that, and the other track. And you have begin to hand one to this person and that person and say, hey, why don't you hand this out this week and come back and tell me who you gave it to. God will be honored as the gospel goes forth. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.